hate the homies. Hey, what it do, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of I Hate the Homies, and we glad that you do. Rock Teasy is who I be. Episode number 89. It's your boy Griff, a.k.a. Griff Stradamus, a.k.a. Jason the Jet Terry, a.k.a. Mr. Go Blue. And uh, episode 89, man, I was going through, right? But I'm going to just go with Steve Smith, the little itty-bitty man from Carolina who went to Baltimore who always been sweet. And I hate the homies. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's your boy Super Dave. But let's not forget about, uh, well, it's been a cowboy. Billy Joe Dupree. Billy Joe Dupree. You remember him? I remember him. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. He's 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 all right. You know what I'm saying? Slash, slash get more, slash get some defensive linemen to help you next time, slash <laughs> get the Washington Redskins. <laughs> so we're going to get into that. I'm sure everybody's seen the video by now. Also, LeBron James defending his oldest son, Bronny, because all of the critics are coming after him saying he's a little bit overrated. Going to give you our homies' opinion on that. And uh, Charles Barkley calling out Kevin Durant on his lack of leadership. Is he true? Is it not true? It is what it is. And, of course, uh, the big storming of the court after a victory, um, whether it's basketball, football, whatever it is, you know, when the fans storm the court after a big victory, a uh, player got injured, a couple things happened this year, so now they're trying to ban it from happening ever again. Man. I got an opinion. I don't know about you guys. Me too. Let's get into it, man. Episode starts right now. Let's go. Ah, I hate the homies. All right, so Cam Newton. Ladies and gentlemen, he hosts a seven-on-seven -seven youth football tournament, and it was going down in Atlanta. He's been doing this for a while, him and his pops. Absolutely. Giving my, back he to went to Westlake High School. My, Absolutely. My, my fifth child is, is, is going to graduate from Westlake High School. I, I, I know his daddy well and his, his mom, and his, I sat next to him. My, my son was his fullback. Uh, for two years in high school, and 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 Cam has always been seven foot seven Pretty when much. all them other children was out there, and he's he's been doing this in the community even when he was at uh, Florida and Auburn too. Absolutely. So at this particular tournament that went down in the ATL, it got a little heated. And if y'all have seen the video, if not, we'll post it on I Hate the Homies yep. on Instagram. You go check it out. Um. He got into a scuffle with some coaches. I think a couple players jumped in. But here's the deal. After the story dropped, nobody knew kind of who started it, what happened. Now they're saying Cause it was it a weird, it was a weird video, right? Like yeah, it was people, you can tell people started recording it like right when it after that started, it had already started, whatever. So now they're saying it was uh trash talking that went too far. Coaches are saying that Cam Newton was talking trash to the coaches, saying y'all ain't all that. Y'all still in our plays. That ain't going to work, this and that. It was going back and forth. According to the coaches' side of the story, they were just kind of like, man, Cam, ain't nobody worried about you, man. Just go on now. I ain't whatever. But, right. you know, it's, it's two to three sides to every story. Uh, my deal is, I'm going to say this, then I'm going to let y'all y'all kind of take it from here. Look, them uh, coaches found out real fast what 6'5", 260 is all about. Former you MVP in the NFL. You <laughs> understand me? They found out what the MVP hey. and the Pro Bowler. Real hey, that dude, that dude came up and tried to sucker punch Cam, and then he was holding off two with one arm, holding and then he was two. slinging the other one with the other arm, and not even budging about, not even coming close to hitting the ground. With all so, that, with all that, looked, his hat stayed on his head. It hat looked like on. an episode of the <laughs> Avengers. People head, coming dog. at the Hulk. That's what it looked like. Um, and 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 number one, if you're gonna jump when I was growing up, when you got jumped, you was on the ground curled up in the fetal position because everybody was stomping you out and kicking you in the back and trying to hit you in the face. So all you could do is cover up. How you jump somebody and lose, like you 
It was nine of them, it looked like. And, it, it, and Cam barely got pushed back like 11 yards to like the gate. But he, like you said, he didn't even kind of go down. Like it was, man. And, and, and the bad, the bad part, we're laughing at it. The bad part is people have become too sensitive. That's the world. About people have become too sensitive. Now, let me tell you about Atlanta sports. Mm -hmm. um, when I came to the South, um, I didn't know how big football was in the South, being a Cali dude, right? You know, we got we had USC and UCLA and Stan Stanford just got fresh. Like, so not even basically USC and UCLA in the whole uh, Pac-12 when I was growing up, right? Um, and moving to the South and really understanding the culture of football and how they didn't have um, NFL teams. So Friday nights and at high school and then Saturday nights at, at the college was huge. And learning about the SEC and the ACC, I've been to parks in Atlanta where these kids is five years old Perfect linebacker stance. I mean, it is it is incredible to watch um, how you know a lot like Texas. So a, lo a oh, lot yeah. like you know, baby Texas. And Florida. Now that I think about it, yeah, of course, duh. But but to watch these kids and their parents start so young, you know. But so that means by the time they Ten and eleven, they with the same people, and and you know it's all trash talk. I want my team to win. No offense to your son, but let's go, my son. Right. You know what I mean? And and that I looked at a little podcast, I guess, where the players or the coaches, whoever jumped Cam or tried to jump Cam, they better be glad he on press charges. Um, they were saying how it had been. He had been talking crazy for a couple of days. So what? Yeah. You know the you know how you know how you shut Cam up in it. You know how you stop Cam Newton in the NFL from ripping his chest open and smiling all big after touchdown. You bust him in the mouth. You laid him down. You 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 intercepted him. That when Cam Newton ain't had no fun, he had the most low self esteem in the NFL. He was moping. He never recovered. So I just feel like trash talk. Damn, we can't even talk crazy to each other. And have, like y'all know, I'm a diehard. Everything I'm screaming Raiders, Michigan. I go to visiting teams the most. I know how to talk crazy and not cuss around kids and not want to fight and not. I'm just talking. I'm just having fun. Like y'all rooting for your team. I'm rooting for mine. Trash talking belongs in sport. It is what it is. It ain't personal. It, and if you win, great. When if you, you get lose, personal, now it's working. That, now on, it's hey, better, 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 better. Listen, man. It, it, <laughs> all this, all this soft, sensitive stuff is like, come on, man. Go, go ahead, Super Dave. I, know yeah, you, I, I know think you. the hard part is you had these. You have kids sitting there watching adults act the way they act over trash talk. You can't get past that. I don't care if Cam Newton is trash talking to me. I think we've all been doing that since since we've been playing sports. Hell, I we do that playing uh uh NBA video games. No, we or, talk or crazy. Games. Exactly. Or or spades or dominoes or chess. The way, or... It, the way to shut a person up is by beating. Beat them. Beat them. That's it. But the world, the way the world is now, we're so sensitive about every single thing. It's just I tough. can't do it unless unless Cam Newton put his hands on somebody, then they came back after him. Then that's the story. But just but he talking, didn't because no, trash talk, talking. That's the talking. oldest trick in the game. We got yeah. you out your game. Hey, quarterback, you can't even throw. Now when you fumble, we in your head. Like that's the rules. Like I get to do everything except touch you. It all started with baseball. Hey, batter, 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 batter. Come you on, know, swing. It's like it, just, it think, all... just think how <laughs> you, just you think. remember. You remember yeah. when we was little? It was yeah. so aggressive. Remember they was shaking. Oh they was man! Yeah. No. <laughs> hey, we want a pitcher, not a belly itcher. Hey, oh, hey. All that stuff. Come on! Come on! And, and just remember how Cam used to talk noise 
being the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, especially when they were winning. Yeah. And he would always do the unzipping uh, of the shirt. The Superman. Showing the, the, Superman. The, the, the he Superman was giving the... balls to kids. Exactly. And yeah. I mean, but the way you shut him up is by what you said earlier, putting him he, on the ground. He bust but, him again, in the mouth. That's, but that's football. Man. Yeah. He's giving his time to the 707. Right. Everybody, everybody, just him, because we don't know the whole story. Right. But everybody acting like kids. Yeah. We supposed yeah. to be setting an example. And we let's can, talk we, about we go can ahead, trash go ahead. talk. We can trash talk all day. All day long. All day long. But let's talk yeah. about the kids real fast because because these kids nowadays, they disrespectful. They need to be yeah. busting them out. Coaches, <laughs> to, like when you got you got and, and, and Shannon Sharp said it best, man. You got Cam Newton. Say what you want to say about him. You don't have to be a fan. You, exactly. don't, you, don't, you don't have to think that he's good or whatever, but he's at your camp. He's taking his time. You have an opportunity to pick his brain. Let's get it. Let's, he's Learn. been where you're trying to go. Yes. I got and a he, thousand he was, questions. He was an MVP. With fighting. He was you an MVP me? at the highest level and, and was considered the best at one point in time. All I'm doing is, Cam, man, show me how to do this. How did you do that? What's the tech off? Me this? Tell oh, me, I mean, yeah, how you oh, throw that on. over the shoulder, uh, twenty yards. Teach me a proper hook and ladder. Teach What's the best part work. about a play action? I got a million. How you come know on. the difference between a, a, a cover two and a cover three and a man? <laughs> I got a million it. questions. And look, I'm asking and a million questions. I only have one question for Cam. One question. <laughs> Why didn't you jump on the ball in that Super Bowl game? In the first quarter, remember, he, remember, he just looked Ever at the ball. No you remember that? You yeah, remember yeah. that? That's yeah. the only question I have for him. That's yeah. the one question. Look, yeah, and that goes for the coaches too. I'm, I'm picking Cam's brain. If I'm a coach, if I'm a youth yeah. coach, yeah. I'm like, yo, man, yo. I want Cam to do whatever he does, and I'm gonna say, kids, look what he did. Cam, question real quick, my man. When you saw the defense break down, what? When did you know to run? Like it's. You know, like you said, Cam, however you feel about him, um, but again, he went to my my kid's alma mater. So I, I, I know him, know him. Um, he got in trouble at Florida. He tried to steal a laptop and throw it out the window, and the police was out the window when the other police was in the room, and they kicked him out of Florida. I remember when he left high school early in December. He was supposed to graduate in June, and he left high school early because he was going to be Tim Tebow's replacement. They was bringing him in early so he could really – soak in the Florida atmosphere and everything. He leaves. He gets kicked out of Florida University. He goes to the number one junior college in America. Blend. Gets him a championship. And then he goes to Auburn and breaks every record in college. Wins the Heisman. John Maxwell, number one pick. Cam has a, an amazing story. How it kind of fizzled out and all that, I don't even remember that part. I remember his whole story, and he was the MVP. Nobody can take that away from him. He did take his team to the Super Bowl. You know, will he be a Hall of Famer? No. Eh. No. <laughs> eh. No, he won't be. Was he, was he a damn decent quarterback who was a game changer? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he made his mark. And yeah. when, you're talking, when you're watching old NFL films 20 years from now, he's going to be one of the stories people tell. You, you know, gonna, it, it, there's no Lamar Jackson and no Patrick Mahomes and no none of these black quarterbacks without Cam Newton. And then never forget, Cam was six five. He was a unicorn. Like he, he was, was a linebacker. He, he was, was a linebacker, linebacker playing linebacker, quarterback. Dog. But yeah. then he was six five and, and two fifty two sixty. He was Ooh. so athletic, man. Like you, Ooh. you in your linebacker head, you saying he a target. You gotta catch him. And Bro. then he had a rock. Let's not talk about the rock, dog. He threw that thing, dog. Yeah. Ooh, 6'5", 250, 260, running a four, five, four, six, forty. Coming Cam downhill. Was, Cam was special, dog. A defensive was special. back. <laughs> yeah. What you gonna do? Like you a safety. You 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 two ten, two twenty. 
you're gonna get your fit. You're gonna get hurt. You're gonna get ran over like that running back from the Titans hit you in the mouth. That's oh how you're gonna feel. Goodness. So, His first four or five years in the NFL were incredible. Yeah, he was, he was putting up numbers, but he and he also could attack you by running the ball. But no, then never no, forget, he was the first person to be like, man, they all these people keep hitting me. Yeah, you, well, you, you. I think after that, that was the. Yeah. Yeah, that was a downfall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't you can't complain about getting sacked. You, <laughs> you can't complain about the hey, man in the whole world, biggest dude on offense that ain't yeah, a lineman. You, Did you just out of your mouth say the league need to do something about these people hitting me? Once you leave right. that pocket, once you leave that pocket, you're fair game. Yeah, I think he that's was right. I think he was referring to more the late hits after the play was over, but still but that's, but that's that's the whole that's the guys getting their, their last that cheap shot, yeah, because of what he did, but what he did on the football field, and he talked a lot of trash. He did talk a lot of trash oh, on the yeah. football field. And, get, yeah. and guess what? Guess what? That last little shot did got him out the NFL. <laughs> hey man, guess guess all them last little and take that with you, Cam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it catches up with you. It does. Well, speaking of that, man, uh, there's a lot of trash talking about Bronny James, oldest son of LeBron James. Uh oh. And LeBron James come to defend his son on social media. Bronny has been in the spotlight since he been in sixth grade playing yeah. youth AAU basketball, select yeah. basketball. And let's just be real. He's had a solid, really, really good youth basketball young he's career. Good. He's good, man. He was, he was, he was, no, he was, he was cold. He was cold. <laughs> At one point in time, he was probably better than LeBron. At the age at of age, 13, right. 14, right. when LeBron was around that age. So right. uh, then he had his cardiac situation with his heart um, right before the season started this year in college to start his As college. As a freshman at USC. USC. Right. Absolutely. So that, you know, that was scary. Thank God he he, he got through it. So Absolutely. now here he is back on the court and he's playing. He's playing. You know, he's, not, he's putting maybe 20 minutes in a game with the squad, averaging 5.5 points a game i think like 2.8 rebounds 2.5 assists um and the critics are coming you know they're they're trashing him they're saying he's not that good which we knew and we knew this was gonna happen they're saying you know I mean? that he's not gonna be a high draft pick and the only way he will get drafted because his dad and all this blah 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 so lebron comes out and says listen guys can you just let the kid be a kid let him play basketball and enjoy his college career and just let things fall in play. The way no, LeBron, we can't. And when you are that? the son of one of the greatest <laughs> of all time, people are going to talk. So I'll let y'all go first. What y'all think? I got a problem with this because it's all about LeBron seeing ESPN and some of these other places taking uh, Bronny off the mock draft. Who gives a damn? It's a mock draft. He's still a freshman at where? USC. LeBron concerned about... Was LeBron concerned about this a month ago when the Lakers were going through their troubles uh, back in January? And he said that one statement about Bronny could play for the Lakers right now. No, he couldn't. So when he said that, what are you doing? You putting pressure on your son and you're making us in the media look at him to be better than what he is. Let him be a kid, LeBron. You didn't do that by what you said just a month ago. You came out and made that statement. Nobody forced you to do that. When the Lakers were going through that struggle, you made the comment. You did about Bronny could play for the Lakers right now, and he couldn't. I said it then, right. and I'm saying it right now. He's so far away from that. You came out just a year ago saying that you one day you want to play for, play with uh, your son. That's fine. A lot of guys, would, if you're in sports, you want to be able to play with your son if your son is in the game. That's fine. But once you say stuff like that, people in the media – Gonna take it, they're gonna take that and run with it because now you put oh, like that. Don't nobody <laughs> care about what you're talking about, young. The sir, you've been in it, you've been in the spotlight since you was 15 years old. I remember exactly. the sports exactly. illustrated that said this little boy's next. You know what I'm saying? You don't get to you don't get to talk about nepotism with your son <laughs> and what it's gonna do, and then say, let him be a kid. What we really need to worry about is how horrible USC is, period. USC is 11 and 16, sir. They are 11th in the Pac-12. They are not fresh. And LeBron James' son, even though he's only playing short time, 
He's he's averaging five and a half points a game. I understand that USC is like, we're not going to start this boy with that weak heart, even though doctors done cleared him and everything. USC is not, we don't need that smoke. We're going to put him in. We, we already losing. So let him come and get some of these garbage points. But LeBron, you don't get to pick and choose who says something about your son and who doesn't something. No, no, LeBron, no. Your this son is, is, a, is a college a athlete. Your Especially. son is a college athlete, and he can catch all this smoke from all sports commentators. And I understand you a parent. Rock T, a parent. His daughter played in the Ivy League. She happens to be fresh, <laughs> so you just can't come at her any kind of way. But she wide open for criticism too. Absolutely. But she's the number one person on the team and has been for a minute. So you, she don't have them problems. So well, I think I think say, if but LeBron, again, he's mad. But hold on, he's mad about a mock draft, a draft that's not even happening right now. Well, according to the draft, team. with 5.5 points a game, you're not going to be on no drafts. Okay, though. then. We're <laughs> talking about it, LeBron. Let the kid – you say let a kid let the kid be a kid. You do the same thing. Let your son play his game. He's never going to be And, LeBron, you should worry about the Lakers record as well. Exactly. <laughs> well, I got, I got an interesting twist on this whole situation. Let me hear it. Everything that you guys said, accurate. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't disagree with it. Um, the health part is, is, is the first issue because you're right. Uh, Griff USC is like, listen, and even LeBron probably said, told USC, look, as, as much as I would want my son out there on the court, Leave 35 minutes alone. a game, man, let him ease into this. He's it's okay. He ain't got to yeah. come out this year. He can go, he can come back another year and play and yep. let's make sure he's going to get to get what he needs to get. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, can 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 he play in the NBA? Of course, he's got the talent to play in the NBA. Like, will he be a superstar in the NBA right now? Of course not. But does he have the talent to get there? Yes, he does. Tremendous upside. Do I think he will be there? Yes. Would he get drafted this year if he decided to enter the draft? If it happens, it'd be last round somewhere and somebody said you know yeah, what i want to give us brownie let me, let me, and we'll send him to the and we'll send him to the g league for a year yep. okay. or he can go ahead and continue to develop yeah and then we'll be ready for him after that that's what i think is probably going to happen but then again he may like a college he may say i was about what? to say what i want to stay in school because i like to be a college to go kid. to yeah. the nba your daddy ain't, ain't go to no college ever yeah. You, you, he don't know what it's like. He heard about it. He had friends that went, but get, you know, you ain't him and he ain't you. So I I'm got like plenty you. of money. I got plenty of money. I got my NIL what deals on my own. I might, I'm going to enjoy college and, get and come back next healthy. year and be sweet. Like I right now, man. I understand what they're doing, keeping me, but well, watch next year. When yeah, I, I guess, guess, because I here's the deal. Here's my last point. Here's my last point. Hold on, Dave. I'm sorry. My last point is this he's going to get drafted. He's going to be in the NBA, and he knows that. Yeah. He knows, so he ain't tripping about statistics. He ain't no. saying, I ain't got to be scoring the leader in the in, in the country. <laughs> I ain't got to lead my team and all this. He knows because I'm Ronnie Jr., and I got enough ability to play on the next level one day. I'm cool. So yeah. that's my opinion, and I think that's the approach that him and his dad and his family are taking. Okay, with all that being said, what you just said there, if he was anybody else but LeBron James' son, with the numbers he's putting up right now, would you say he's going to the NBA? We would say he was going to be um, a bench rider under Matt McClung's Orlando. <laughs> I don't even know what the G League Orlando, the Orlando Abracadabras, I don't know. The Orlando Houdinis, I don't yep. know what the G League <laughs> We would not be talking about him right now. I think the biggest part and the biggest pressure for Bronny right now is, and you see this with a lot of guys in sports who got a father, follow the, the father. You saw with Ken Griffey Jr. Sr. I mean, Ken, yeah. Griff, Ken, Griff, Ken Griffey Jr. Sr. and Ken Griffey Jr. going against, you know, at the, not the same time, but two baseball players. Right. And I, you know, but you that, that, that incident, Jr. was better than Pops. Okay, and that's what I mean. That, that's and when you look at LeBron James and Bronny, I don't think the Bronny will ever be where Le, LeBron James is. No, I don't think so either. But I think Bronny can definitely 
if if his he'll health put it, he'll put it down. If, 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 if his health stays, his daddy, like, his, he can, don't need now, a Brian coach. Can play, man. Brian, well, I give you a good, I give you a good example. Coach. <laughs> Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, hmm? and their daddy. Arch. Who's the better quarterback out of all of them? I mean, Peyton. to me, so Peyton. so Peyton, giant Peyton, fans, Archie, giant, Eli. yeah, giant fans is gonna say, but look at, but to me, Peyton, Peyton, Manning, Peyton, Manning, now. <laughs> Peyton Manning is is so smart. He has such a high football, but you could see his head shape and see that he got a big. <laughs> He the Frankenberry cereal box face, man. And all it and all instead of cereal in the box is just audibles and <laughs> Omaha. Omaha. I love it. It's just it's just hard to come behind a superstar. Father and son. That's just a hard Yeah, but it's that. no, but but to me, when um when your dad is so yesterday, here's a perfect example. I watched a country western movie called um, The Outlaw Posse, mm -hmm. written and directed and produced by Mario Van Peebles. And, the, and his son, Mandela Peebles, I just shot a movie with him last year. So Mandela called me and said, hey, me and my dad in town, come see. So I watched the movie. And at the end, so Mandela, of course, Mario is the star, but Mandela is the other star of the movie. And they look identical Mm -hmm. But never forget Melvin Van Peebles. They did the first posse, and then his son was in that movie. And now here's Mario with his son in that movie. But they was asking him, "What's it feel like to be in a movie with your dad?" And he was like, "Man, I, you know, I've been rehearsing with my dad for 29 years. It's my right. father. Like, is 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 what our family does? Is our love language in our family? And I don't think." The way they were raised, there's no pressure to be like your dad. They just want you. You know what? Parent don't want their kids just to be kids. Yeah. I don't. You know, I didn't let my kids get a job when they was living with me because I'll take care of your money. I just yeah. want you to be a kid. Have yeah, some okay. fun. I and, come live with you, Dad. I come uh, live with you. <laughs> you still the right size, Dave. You can get away with it. <laughs> Hey babe, I got a foster kid. <laughs> like like that gangster that always tried to be a baby on Bugs Bunny. Yeah. 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 Hey babe, I need a I need a kind of big onesie. That's what I need. <laughs> kind of big. <laughs> and a big oversized sippy cup. <laughs> It'd be a Stanley cup, and he just hold. You know how strong he is. Yeah. <laughs> You can hold a Stanley Cup with one hand that all you yeah. see is neck muscles inside yes. of it. I want my Prince. I want my Prince onesie. That's all I want. Oh, oh. oh. yeah, man. So there it is. Bronny gonna be all right. So quit all that doggone LeBron. You fine, man. You've been you've been dealing with this public press stuff. He gonna be all right. He's built for this. So let's let's yes. keep it moving. As, as Griff said, you focus on the Lakers, boy. That's a whole That's nother problem. Do. That's a whole nother problem. But. Charles Barkley is focusing on Kevin Durant, pretty much calling his uh, lack of leadership is, is an issue. KD, but he's not doing it. To me, it's got to be Booker. He's got to be your, your mental leader and your vocal leader to a certain degree. No disrespect to Kevin. Kevin's a follower. He's not a leader. He's proving that on all his stops. Booker's a hell of a player also. I think he's going to have to take the initiative and take this on team to the next level because... Man, Kevin's a hell of a player. I ain't never gonna say anything bad about him, but I say the same thing with Boston. One of you guys has to step forward. He has to step forward. And for me, for Phoenix to be successful, it has to be Booker. So Charles Barkley says it has to be Booker, but the best line of that whole spiel was no disrespect to Kevin, but he's a follower. <laughs> and and and, and we understand what he means. We understand. We've talked about Kevin Durant several times on this show. We kind of been like, he'll never be the, you know, I don't think, I think Kevin is already a hall of famer. Oh, He's definitely. already a hall of famer. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, MVP, MVP, right? Yes. Yeah. He won. Yeah. He, he won one or two of them, didn't he? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking multiple, uh, MVP winner. 
And a dude that just loves, like, literally probably has basketballs in his trunk or in his back seat. Like, the dude is a basketball head, dog. You don't want to – you don't see him at restaurants. You don't see him at clubs. Ain't no pictures of page six when he was in Brooklyn that he was out with somebody. The dude plays 2K, and he plays in the NBA, and that's it. Like, and he does not brush his hair. I was going to say, go go to that one. <laughs> You can find balls in the truck, but you can't hey, find man. a brush in the car. <laughs> Love you, KD, but put a brush on that bad boy, dog. Man, I, I don't have a problem with what Chuck said. I mean, I think we've seen it from when he was at Oklahoma, when yeah. he had a three one a three to one lead over the Golden State Warriors when he wasn't playing for the Golden State Warriors. They could they had a chance to knock him out. I think Russ was more of a leader on that basketball team yeah. at OKC. Absolutely, and and then he went to Golden State because he couldn't beat these guys. What happened there? Steph was really the leader of that basketball team. It's Steph's I mean, team. It, it was Steph's team. KD right. came in, did his part, won two MVPs, finals MVPs, and won two championships with the Golden State Warriors. But I think the telling story, when he went to Brooklyn, yep. you can tell there was no leadership there. Because you had – he could have. And we said it for, for – episodes and you had three Why KD not time. saying come on Kyrie come on yeah. man let's coach let me we got it out here just let me run it through me coach and like Charles said he a follower Charles and, and then here go the ill part he ain't he don't he ain't lacking for loot he don't need money no, no, so he, he ain't money. going <laughs> he ain't going to these places because he he's so pressed for money he, I just think Kevin Durant is somebody that's like he like change. But you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be hard on him too hard because I even saw with the Cowboys back in the day, everybody ain't supposed to be a leader. Yeah. Like even when, Agreed. even when the Cowboys winning championships, I mean, it's been a long time since since in the '90s. But even during that time, Aikman wasn't a vocal leader on that football team. It right. was Mike Lervin. Well, Aikman, well, being, well, being a veteran, Aikman, being a Aikman veteran became in the a vocal military, leader. everybody became, be, everybody Aikman became, became a vocal leader. But yeah. I, but I don't think you just come in and and you could be that that guy. You got to want to be that guy because yeah. you got to want to show it. Right, bro, why it. we talk about Devin Booker? Devin Booker don't want to be that guy either. Hey, Devin Booker still look like a baby. Like that he just came got, out the womb. That little boy got the <laughs> rosiest cheeks. Boy, he always just kind of, but that joke of cold, he, old boy. He, Chris Paul came there and became a whole leader in his Ben Devin Booker team. Like Devin Booker also will be a Hall of Famer with hella numbers. And, and that's you know, why Phoenix, quiet. And that's why Phoenix won't go anywhere this year in the NBA, in the NBA playoffs, because they don't have that leadership. They, they well, don't I, have that guy to step up. They got some shooters though, and they got Brad uh, Beasley too. Like they over there. Uh, yeah, but he got to he got to he got to stay healthy. That's the I other know. thing. I got a. I, I got. I agree with everything except one part from what, what y'all said and what Barkley said. When when KD was in Oklahoma, he was the leader in my opinion, and he was on the process of being the type of leader that Charles was talking about. But then he jumped ship. Like he was that he was like yo let's go if he would have stayed in Oklahoma, I mean I really I, I really believe I really believe you? I really believe that oh. they could have listen he wasn't he wasn't like come on get in your he wasn't that kind of a leader but he was becoming that because if you remember him and Russell used to start they started knocking heads a little bit right because Kevin was starting. Russell was starting to get on his nerves. They were starting to get because they were trying to figure out who's going to be the Batman, who's going to be the Robin. Right. So this was Kevin. This was Kevin trying to say, "Hey, I'm Batman. You Robin, but you still cold now. Come on, let's 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 figure yeah, out our roles on this team." See Robin by themselves. You, yeah. You're take the L. <laughs> so Bat Batman, no, he was he was like, if I got Robin, all right, let's go. We going to war. I got right. you. If I'm by myself, oh dang. Okay, I got to figure something out. So Kevin was trying to become that, but Russell wouldn't let him. And then he's like, you know what? Deuces. It is what it is. So that's the only thing I have different opinion on that. But other than that, hey, I agree. I don't I don't think Kevin I, is going to be this team. Him, I'm not knocking him to go on to Golden State because he was a free agent. And he, he, had, that, he, had, he has a chance to test the waters and see exactly where you be in the best position he needed to be in to win a championship. I have no problem with that. But I still think even when he was with Oklahoma City, I think it was Russell. 
being more of a leader than Kevin. The, Kevin the whole thing is Kevin Durant is a is a, a bottom line Hall of Famer, superstar, NBA player. Is he a leader? I'm gonna go say no. Uh, Rock, is he a leader to you? Nope, not now. Nope. Super Dave. No, he's not a leader. No. no. And when you and uh, okay, now let me add this question. We can wrap it up and go to this next. But when you think of a leader in basketball, who do you think of, Super Dave? Michael Jordan. Okay. Yeah, there's a no right. brainer. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them, man. You got, got Kobe Bryant. I'm, asking, I'm just trying to see what Isaiah you know. Thomas. I mean, man. pick a team, especially back in the day. I like you know, Kobe. Kobe. I like the Joker. I like I like the how Joker you is can... a great example of a quiet leader. A quiet, I was about to say, yeah. I like because you ain't gotta leader. be like, gotta like, be... like like Tony Dungy. He wasn't a his, his coaching style wasn't loud. No, nope. but, but he led that team and he had everybody All on his it. back. Yep. So there's a such thing as being a quiet leader, and and Kevin Durant and just being quiet. quiet. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but hey, it is great. One of the greatest players to ever play. He'll be a yep. Hall of Famer. It is what it is. So let's get ready to wrap up and talk about what's going on with uh, storming the court after basketball game. Dukes Phil, uh, Filipowski, uh, he got injured because fans stormed the court. He got hit. I believe his knee got twisted. He got turned in a circle. Not a major injury, but it is. And then we see what happened with Caitlin Clark. Caitlin when, pushed that girl. She pushed her absolutely. Wow. But, but it still started girl, from <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to play it off until they that slow mo that bad boy. Flop, the best flop. Yep. They slow that bad flop. boy down. <laughs> <laughs> Even her coach is kind of like, well, okay, we have to look at it. Fine. Damn, damn, near, fine. damn near forearm <laughs> shivered that girl before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we slow that thing down. But anyways, let's talk about this whole court storming and they're trying they're trying to ban it from sports period i'm just gonna say this y'all there's something cool about storming the field and storming the court after games man i don't want them to ban it so man. that's all i gotta say what y'all got man i ain't, even got, all, I ain't man. gonna ain't nothing ain't got talk long about it no it ain't nothing that, listen Y'all the number one team here. Here's a good, great example. My son, Devin Air, was at uh, Louisville's game when Notre Dame was in the top ten. And Louisville beat Notre Dame at night, and they all went on the field. He was like, Pops, I was out there on the field, dog. I'm going to go out there, too. My team ain't ranked. Y'all supposed to be these big uh, – David and Goliath. I Come believe on. in Jesus. David, let's go, David. Don't stop David right there. You ain't got to explain nothing. Dave, what you think? Y'all are wrong. You got to get rid of this stuff. They Man. did it in the NFL. They did it in Major League Baseball. They did it in, in, in the NBA. You should not be able to storm the court, especially after the team that loses. Those fan, The fans are coming on the court that won. They're talking trash. They're getting in your face on these players that are leaving the court or leaving the field. At some point, you're still in battle mode. Somebody says something in your face. I know what we said about trash talking, but you're talking about fans doing this in front of your face. And one day, somebody's going to take a swing at a fan. And one day, that, that fan going to get busted in the mouth, but then his other 20,000 friends at a basketball team game at home going to be right behind him. So we ain't saying incite the violence. We just saying, let me live, man. Let me live, G. Yeah, I mean, you can, uh, you can, you can adjust. Live I want to live in my seats. I want to live on the field. Let all me you be gotta do, All you have to do is make a, a slight adjustment, okay? You can storm the field or the court, but you have Let's to make wait. Sure everybody, make sure everybody is. Make sure the players are off the court hey. after the handshake. Whatever, but like, even that's even pushing it. But I'm like, come on, how they, I don't like that. That's hard to control. I, yeah, yeah, that's, that's hard, hard to control. control. Cause now Man, you please. you got them people with the yellow jackets on <laughs> who ain't making no money, minimum wage. And they like, man, go ahead, dog. I'm the light. I'm the light. Olay, Olay. It's all It'd good. Be like, what was the uh, what was the what was the thing that happened in January? <laughs> uh, at the Capitol, it'd be like that. Just oh, let you come in. It. Yeah, you don't want that smoke. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm saying let folk be great, man. Uh, <laughs> I, hope they don't, I hope they don't take that away. Let's no. get up out of here, Rock. Deuces, man. Hey, thank y'all for listening and watching. I hate the homies. Episode number 89. Rock Teasy is who I be. It's your boy Griff, aka not Cam Newton. 
How about that? It looked like Cam Newton was playing Uno with some people who ain't know the rules, and they gave him a draw 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I hate the homies. <laughs> and it's your boy, Super Dave. And I can't wait for 2025 so I can stop seeing this 2024 National Championship of the Michigan Wolverine. Stop wearing that! Hold on, hold on. I'm going to say this and we can go. Did y'all see that EA Sports is releasing that NCAA football dog? It's coming out this summer. All right, let's go. There it is. Go crazy. Go crazy.